Well, next up is an intriguing uh, men's singles because it's NC Young, the Commonwealth Games silver medalist, up against Koki Watanabe, who was a winner of the Swiss Super 300 event last year. So all matches today from the bottom half of the draw, and this is the fourth quarter of the draw, as you can see. And last year's beaten finalist, the number two seed, Kodai Naraoka, is safely through against uh, Christo Popov. Oh, and Brian Yang uh, from Canada has come to an absolute Japan against Wan Su Wei of Chinese Taipei. Well, So here, the, the two players. Chaturanga Vishwanath Sri Lanka. And I really do think this Jacob is Simbuk a fascinating Denver. encounter. Two hugely talented individuals, and of course, N.C. Yong are playing on home soil. My goodness me, what a wonderful year he had last year. Reached the final of a first world tour event that was in Finland at the Arctic Open. In fact, it was an all Malaysian final that was lost in the final to Lee Zizia. So our court officials await the players and this will be just a second meeting between these two players. And the only previous occasion was won by Watanabe. But that was Ready in the second fall. round, the you Japan Open. So Watanabe was playing on Defend. home soil. Will you now, Ng Si Yong has the luxury of playing on home soil. And I can't help but think that that might actually uh, just make a difference. So the change of ends before the start of the warm-up period. Ng Siong really did uh, make his mark at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022. Uh, stepped into the shoes of Li Zia when Li Zia pulled out. And my goodness, he played his part, uh, winning a silver medal in the end in the individual competition and gold in the team. He's only 23 years of age, as you can see, a born in Japan. And uh, 180 translates into 5 foot 11, so a tall athlete. His opponent, Koki Watanabe, will turn 25 later this month. He is playing off his career high of 23 on the world rankings. In fact, it's his eighth consecutive week at his career high. Uh, born in Kushigaya in Saitama Prefecture, about 30 kilometers from downtown Tokyo. So he's playing well, that's quite obvious. Two uh, World Tour tournament finals, in fact, for him last year. Uh, won the Swiss Open, having been promoted from the qualifying list. Uh, then he reached the final of the Korean Masters. Uh, that was towards the end of last year. So our court officials for this one from Sri Lanka and Denmark. And they're the Malaysian coaches. Hendra one on the right as we're looking at them and Tay Subot are the other. Ready to play? So, Steen, I said this was a fascinating, intriguing contest. Do, do you agree with me? I'm very look, much looking forward to it. I think so. I think so, because um, this is um, some of the uh, faces that we're going to see, be seeing for the years to come as well, even though they're already a factor. It's also uh, some of the players that are going to take over when older players retire. Yeah, and there's likely to be a, a definite retirement point after the Olympics uh, later this summer. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, all right. One, two, 
Ladies and gentlemen, number nine, Koki Watanabe, Japan. On my left, Eun Si Yong, Malaysia. Eun Si Yong, Sister, Lobos, Play. So it is the Malaysian Eng Si Yong far side of the court as we look down and it's this first round in singles match underway against Koki Watanabe. Again, to cheer every single point that Eng Si Yong wins Goal. here in this at Seattle Arena. Steen, the first time Seven, I four. actually sort of really noticed the name of Eng Si Yong was Two. during lockdown. And we were obviously beginning to come out of lockdown, but uh, Badminton Association of Malaysia held an invitational event to get the players uh, into competition again before the world opened up. And he won the invitational event. And I thought, my goodness, who is this young man? And yeah. I've been following him ever since. Oh, that's a good shot. He's actually, I mean, he's, uh, he's risen quite fast in my opinion um, just when uh, Malaysia had uh, Lee Shi Kua win the All England and they suddenly found another player and I think many would have expected it could be a player like Lung Jun Hao uh, and then out of nowhere more Three. or less came Ng Si Yong yeah. for the Olympics, Ooh. both Ng and Li Shijia is within uh, the qualification limit in men's singles. Uh, it's always interesting to me, Steve, that uh, when a player is given an opportunity, as indeed this man was at the Seven Commonwealth four. Games in 2022, Three. you know, some Four. athletes sort of um, crumble under the pressure of suddenly being in the limelight and expected to win. He was Malaysia's number one singles player at the Commonwealth Games. But he responded, he grabbed his opportunity, uh, coming home with a gold and a silver. I mean, uh, that was absolutely extraordinary. And that, to me, is fascinating, the way he dealt with that pressure. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Uh, and. Um I think the the most important thing in um, in that equation is that that you have some kind of um, uh, not, I don't want to say basic skills, but you have some kind of skill level that sort of uh, makes it possible. Sometimes expectations are piled on you, but the, but, but the skill level is simply not uh, there yet. Yeah. But if you have the skill level and, and you're and just looking for an opportunity to uh, sort of uh, uh, make make a, a name for yourself, then uh, that's the little uh, chance that you you need. We saw it with one of the players we've seen earlier today, Aya Ohori. She was the lone Japanese women's singles players in the Asian Games following the withdrawal of Akane Yamaguchi, and suddenly she goes in to win a bronze medal. Yeah, good point. Yeah, not. An expected bronze medal, the way I saw it. Uh, no, she, she really performed well because now she was given the responsibility so and, and the um, um, Five, the awareness of the coaches. Four. She was the number one in that uh, event. And yeah, she beat Tai Tsui Ying, didn't she? Yeah. Five, one, three. Uh, it's a tight spin in the extra from MC Long. 
Sun is over. Five off. Yeah. Really tumbled that shuttle. Good shot. Oh, Oi. indecision there from Watanabe. Six, five. Yeah. Coaches tell you from when you're a very young player, they don't assume the shuttle's going to go out. Get yourself in a position to play it should you change your mind. Yeah. Of course, the short left. Seven, five. You had to sum up Six. the style of Watanabe. Steve, how would you sum it up? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, a good um, question. A little bit like sort of like a terrier style. Uh, not too, I mean, his stature is, of course, um, he, he's got the height that he has, but that means that he's got to apply a lot of pressure on uh, most of his shots to, uh, to keep the initiative in the rally. Yes, five foot six, not the tallest of athletes. Oh, oh that's a beauty. Yeah. So Th that's that's actually some of the signature things here because that was good, well placed smash. It was not necessarily a winner. It, it shouldn't necessarily be a. Oh, that was actually very well placed was much more well placed than I thought initially yeah so that's that that was a winner that was on the line um, but but um, I'm thinking a little bit about um, Ong Yiv Hock when he played his best the Malaysian reached the final of the All England um, sort of the same style and of course he can play Oh, no, what happened there? Oh, oh he's he injured. He hurt his Eight, back. He hurt his back. Seven, oh, 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 dear, dear me. And we should mention that Ong Yu Hock also won this title, the Malaysian Open. Yeah. Have Let's a see. closer look at this, Steve. Oh, there. Yeah. No, the tournament's referee and doctor have been called on. 1996 for the record on New Hop, one here. Wow. Oh, really nice that. But on New Hop, one this time. Yeah. Uh, we can't really see what's going on here, but uh, it, it's his back, there's no doubt about it. Well, this is terrible. The question right. mark is how. Oh, Six. look at that, there's a Eleven. lot of strapping on. Yeah. Already. Well, this is very concerning if you're a Malaysian fan. This doesn't look good, in all honesty. And the word that his coach is too. And uh, he's got to be very careful here because, I mean, this is, of course, an important tournament. But there are more tournaments to come. Yeah. And I thought in the beginning that he looked a little bit, um, I interpreted as nervous because of the expectations. Now Li Xijia lost yesterday and a lot of expectation on you know, on the home soil, but maybe it was his back that wasn't um, totally fit. It's going to be the uh, launches, I think, to the front court. That's when we're going to get an indication of the seriousness of the um, Back injury. Oh, 
I think we're going to see him Nine more or less reacting eight. to what uh, Watanabe is, uh, is going to do. Played a little bit passive. Yeah, so no initiative taken. Exactly, oh, that's not going to go. That's eight. not going to go. This is just. Ten. He, yeah. He's only going to make it worse, I think. Yeah, if he can't, he can't even react to that. Then yeah, that was that was a big. Uh, there it is again. Yeah. There's no point in continuing. No, no, there really isn't. Oh, yeah, how unfortunate. Yeah. But I mean, if the poor man can't move, and it's fairly obvious from the last few rounds, he can't move. Yeah, I think she's uh, substituting Court because Kentanishi Mochi is playing on the adjacent court there, so I suppose it's uh, not going to see it, but I think it's not an issue. Sitting on that match, the normal men's singles coach. Now that lunge forward yeah. that we just saw there, Steen, that's precisely what you were talking about, lunging forward 11, eight. to the forehand side. I Play. simply don't understand why he's continuing on. Oh, look, he can hardly move. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean Call it a day. Call it a day. This is just, you're not going to do yourself any good well, at all. Eight. You're not going to win this match. And here we go. Yeah. He's had enough. Unfortunately, the only logic uh, conclusion, yes. yeah. had it been uh, a semi-final or a final, and he would have been a game up and 18-12, uh, you could have uh, tried to score the last three points. Yeah, so that's it. Desperately sad for the home fans. He's tried to play. At the back certainly wasn't up to it. That became blatantly obvious uh, very quickly indeed. Uh, it's a huge shame because it was on paper, I right, thought, a really intriguing encounter between the two of them. Exactly. But anybody who's, who's tried to have a, a little bit of a lock in the back and try to play badminton or any other sport where you need to move knows that that's terribly difficult. Yeah, virtually impossible. So, to us, 12 minutes into the match, and NC Yonk retires with a back injury. 12-8 was the score at the time, so Watanabe goes through to the second round. And Watanabe will play against either one of the bronze medalists from last year's World Championships, because we will be watching Antonsen against Pranoy a little later on. <laughs> 